Before we begin our reflection for the Sunday morning, I'd like to invite us all to join together as a community of Christ in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the gift of this new day. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, because we know that it was you, O oh Lord, that has protected us during the evening. And we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the new opportunities that you continue to open up for us in our lives. Special thanks we give you, O oh Lord, for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit given to each and every one of us in our baptism. Holy Spirit, we ask, O oh Lord, that now open up our minds and our hearts so that we may understand those things that are way beyond our understanding. So that we may see your face and feel your embrace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to begin my reflection for this Sunday morning by sharing with you some of my theological formation. I think that if you listen to different uh, preachers and pastors talk about scripture, you will see that not all of them are coming from the same direction or for the same uh, type of formation. Even though the theme is always focused on Jesus Christ and the presence of God in our individual lives. Theology is a really complex and difficult thing. And as I said before, as you listen to pastors and theologians talk about where they are grounded, they will be all over the spectrum. There are those that are much more conservative in their formation. There are those that believe that God is an ever-changing entity. There are those that believe that God and Jesus reside in heaven and that their understanding is brought to us through the movement of the Holy Spirit. There are those that are liberation theologians that will talk mostly about society and how God reacts and is involved in society. And I guess if I talk about my theological formation, I am somewhere in the middle. I am what you would call probably a process theologian. For you see, I believe that God has established a really special relationship with you and with me. And that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are ever present in our life no matter what. And no matter what we are going through. And I guess a simpler way of saying that is that I understand that when I am suffering and I am crying, God is crying along with me. And that when I am laughing and when I am celebrating, God is laughing and God is celebrating with me. For you see, He has established a very special and caring and intimate relationship with me and with every one of you. Now building on that theological formation, taking a look at the gospel text for the Sunday morning, I guess the first thing that came through my mind is that I would think that most pastors would talk about the mission of the church. That this, in this particular text, God is actually sending out missionaries, disciples, in order to greet and to meet people on their way. The gospel for the Sunday morning is also very co complicated because we also need to understand that the gospel was written in a society that was male dominant. And being a society that is male dominant, what we mostly and what is mostly brought to our attention is the 12 disciples. When we think about those that surround Jesus, we think about the 12. But what this gospel lesson teaches us is that the disciples of Jesus was much bigger and much greater than just 12. 
In fact, it talks about Jesus sending 70. Now, you also need to understand that in a male-driven society where everything is formed and shaped, even their thinking is around male dominance. Now, when they talk about 70, they are talking about 70 males, 70 men. But you know what? I believe and I understand that when Jesus sent out the 70 men, he also sent out women and he also sent out children. He sent out families in order to talk about the presence of God in their lives. The Gospel lesson also talks and informs the people that when you meet someone, you talk to them and you share the peace of God be with you in your household. Now for those that are coming from very traditional theological thinking, peace means for them not only a kind of calmness and a kind of relax, a kind of calm living in a calm existence, but also that within that calm existence, God is present. But when I read that text, I understand that to be something very, very different. That has absolutely nothing to do with calmness. It has absolutely nothing to do with everything being okay. In my life or in your life. When I read that particular text, what I saw is a God who is an awesome and loving God. A God that has come into our lives and is with us no matter what we are facing in life. No matter whether things are going well or things are going bad. No matter if we are feeling wonderful or if we are filled with pain. What I understand that text to mean for me, and I think for all of humanity, and all of God's people, is that no matter what is happening in your life, God is present. God is present indeed. And it not only includes the apostles or the 70, it includes every single man and woman and child in all of creation. No matter what race you are, no matter what color you are, no matter what you believe, this creation belongs to God, a loving God who is ever present in your life and in my life. And so what the peace that God offers to you and to me is the assurance, is the knowledge, is the firm understanding that no matter what, no matter what I am going through, no matter what I am thinking, no matter how I am feeling, no matter what pains I am suffering, God is there with me and God will continue to be with me now and forever. That is what it means to really feel and to really incarnate the peace of God and the peace in your house. A peace that is not only for men, but also for women and also for children, for all are part of God's good creation. Now the text also continues to talk about the kingdom of God. That with Christ, the kingdom of God the transformation of the world, the transformation of your life and of my life, the changes that are being and hopefully are occurring in your life and in my life because we are baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because of the waters of baptism, the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended upon you and upon me and the Holy Spirit entered you and entered me and incarnated again the ever-loving and ever-living Christ in your life and in my life. And so the kingdom of God is not something abstract. The kingdom of God is not a place. 
The kingdom of God is not a sense of being. The kingdom of God is God infiltrating and penetrating your very body and making you His. And taking over all of creation and bringing it back into His fold. I believe, I know, that in the times in my life, that I needed God the most. I didn't have to look for Him. I didn't have to know or think that He was there. I knew that because I was baptized into the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit became incarnate in me, continues to embrace me when I am down, or when I am up. When I am crying, when I am afraid, or when I am laughing, or when I am celebrating. For you see what this gospel really means is that you belong to God. Is that God has become incarnate in every single one of you. That Father, Son, and Holy Spirit continue to create new opportunities in your life. That from Jesus Christ becoming incarnate and grabbing hold of your very soul, of your very person. He is making new things and bringing you closer to God. And that through God, the Holy Spirit, you begin to open your mind and you begin to see in the midst of everything that surrounds you, a loving and caring God. Incredible. Incredible and awesome. Indeed. And so Jesus turned to his followers. And he said, I am sending you into the world. <laughs> And when you greet each other, you greet each other with the peace of the Lord. When you greet each other, you greet each other by simply saying, in you, and in you, and in you, and in you, I see the face of my loving God. In you, I see a God who truly cares and truly loves you and truly loves me. And when you see that face of God in others, we truly, truly rejoice in you. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to embrace you and to love you and to care for you. May God continue to be the very center of your 